the words problems, find out what works, and um, I will spend a little bit of time in this slide. I think that's quite important. So, um, 59 million children they don't have access to school. One billion don't have access to healthcare, and I will spend some time here. Eight million children confined to institutions, institutions, orphanages. For the last month, I've met two big charities that are focusing on closing orphanages all, all over the world. Orphanages, they are forbidden in UK, they are forbidden in US, probably forbidden here and in lots of countries. Orphanages are evil, really, and they are used by unscrupulous people to make money. How? They choose a very nice location, for example, Southeast Asia. Beach, sunshine, everything beautiful. They go to the small villages, they talk to the parents of the children and they say, look, I have an institution, I will deliver a better education for your children, I will deliver, uh, you don't have to feed them anymore because they are struggling to feed them, I will give food, I will give education, I will give everything, and also I will have beautiful people, volunteers, coming from all over the world to help me to take care of these children. Beautiful. But the thing is, the volunteers, they have to pay to go there. And when these children are there, they suffer a lot. A lot. They suffer one. Because volunteers go there for a week. So you bond, a, you build a really good bond with your children for a week and then you leave, you are back with your family, the children is there. Most of the time locked in a room, don't have access to good food, don't have access to health, and the most dangerous thing, they can be sold to human trafficking. So the other charity that you are talking about that is fighting this evil, I was talking to a lady that she works in India, on the ground, and she was telling me that they go to the, the human traffickers, they go to the orphanages, they buy children there, they take the student to the street, and sometimes, it's horrible, but they chop the hand of the children off, because a children with only one hand can beg for more money than a children with two hands. So, when people go for a holiday being a volunteer in a orphanage, you are feeding these unscrupulous people that sell and kill and do all the bad things with children. Sell girls to prostitution, they do only horrible things. 70 to 80 5% of the children that are in our orphanage today, they have a direct relative. They have a part, they have father, they have mother, they have uncle, they have grandmother. They, they are just there because the unscrupulous people go there and fool their family to make money with these children. So really think about it if you are committing yourself to one of these volunteering experiences. That is a very nice uh, TED talk from the CEO of the Optimus Foundation, the uh, uh, foundation of UBS. Um, her name is Phyllis So if you want to see it, I think it takes like only 15 minutes and then she will talk about the experience that her daughter 
at the volunteer in one of these orphanages. So this is really bad, guys. Uh, we have to fight this evil. Uh, coming back to the slide here, uh, Mark Zuckerberg pledge. Before the Facebook crisis, he pledged 49 billion. Is only 6% of what UK spends in health, education, social services, and defense. So, 49 billion, it's nothing compared about what the UK government expends. It's only the UK. So the investment gap to solve the problems is huge. We have an investment gap of 1.75 trillion uh, dollars per year. If we deploy the 5 trillion dollars that you are foreseeing for in 20 years, it only will close the gap for 2.3, 2.4 years. So it's not enough. Just making grants is not enough. Won't solve the problem. So how we scale up? How we can solve the problem? One is making, investing, making money or investing, making investments in, in uh, social investing, in uh, impact investing. Here you can see the average return and the average uh, uh, the, 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 the annual volatility for uh, SP 500 and the social index, which has nine, 900 uh, companies in the US, 90% of these companies, they are big companies, then you have some middle cap and small caps as well, but this is a serious index. And then you can see that the performance is not different. So why not, when investing, when buying shares, looking for companies that are linked in social investing? We can uh, use our investments uh, in a very wise way. And also look, looking to the trends, that, uh, the mega trends, emerging market infrastructure, education, uh, healthcare, water scarcity, etc. When uh, you are building your portfolio, why not drop down bonds from countries that they don't respect human rights and replace these bonds with World Bank bonds or bonds from a company that is really worthy with the, S, uh, the ESGs, the Environmental, Social and Governance uh, Outcome. So how we drive the impact for the poorest? Uh, one of the strategies, this is quite complicated, I will try to make it simple, is uh, we have a foundation. So just pay attention to this part. So you have a foundation that can be Optimus, can be Rockefeller Foundation, any other foundation. We'll make a loan to a social enterprise and this loan will be reverted by services or goods that will reach beneficiaries. For example, uh, you make a loan to a social enterprise that is focused on education, but it's not free education. You, are, you have to pay some small fee to be in that school. So you make it, the customers will pay back the enterprise and the, pay, the enterprise will pay back the investors. Why we do it? Because nobody else will do a, a, a commercial bank won't do it. Or if they do, they will charge interest rates, that enormous interest rate. And we do it like with a 1 or 2 or even 3% interest rate. And if the social enterprise doesn't pay us back, it became a grant. So, no problem at all. But we always try to see if we can find projects 
that will uh, pay us back. So this is one of the ways that we can change the scenario nowadays. Uh, the other way that I think that is much more clever is related to this. So death and tax to see you, tax want to come first. So we have two certain things in life, death and tax, and we pay tax. So why we cannot uh, have our governments to spend the money more effectively? or efficiently, or with more efficiency. So how we do it? We do it through uh, two uh, instruments. Deep, dips and sips. What's the difference between both? This is Development impact bonds, the other one is social impact bonds. Development impact bonds, uh, there is a central figure here, this guy, the outcome payer. <coughs> For a development impact bonds, it's a company, it's a foundation, it's an individual. For the SIB, the outcome payer is the government. So at UBS, what we are doing? We are setting up DIPs to show to governments how can they spend the, tax the, the taxpayer uh, money more wisely. So how does it work? There is another slide here that I like a little bit more. This one here. So how does it work? A donor makes a donation to Optimus Foundation. Uh, beside the fact, just a parenthesis, beside the fact it's called bonds, it's not a bond. You can, the money that you donate to us deep will never return to you. It can return to your foundation and then you can deploy it again. But the money that you invested or donated to a deep cannot be used to buy a house, a company, whatever. It has to be recycled into philanthropy. So how does it work? You donate money to Optimus, Optimus will find a partner, a charity, or a social enterprise that will deliver goods or services to beneficiaries. That's all where the traditional model of great, makes, great making stops. Here, with the dips, we have two more uh, actors here. One is the evaluator or the independent assessor. These guys, they will check out for the outcomes. So when I choose this project, I agree with them that we are going to have X, Y, Z KPIs put in place and that I was going to pay, or the outcome founder was going to pay X amount of money for each children in the school, for example. The each children that left the school knowing how to write and how to do maths until a certain level. Uh, so, the two new actors here in the team are the independent assessor that will check for the outcomes and if the outcomes are the ones that were agreed with uh, the outcome founder, the outcome founder will pay back Optimus Foundation. And the Optimus Foundation will come to you if you have invested, let's say, a million in, in a team here, Optimus Foundation will come back to you and say, like, now you have 1 million and 100 or 1 million and 200 after three years of your investment where you want to deploy this money again in another deed, in a loan or even in a grant so if we look at that pile of money of 5 trillion using this kind of instrument you can recycle 
that five trillion many times through the years. And then you can close the gap alongside other strategies as impact investing. So this is a very clever instrument and this is something that we believe that will uh, uh, help to solve uh, most of the world's problems today. For example, we have a partnership with the uh, like Liberian government and we are studying how to set up a deep debt for education. So when we are looking at the books, we realize that the government there was spending a hundred dollars per student in primary education. What's not too bad for a developing country. But only 17% of the children were leaving the school knowing how to read or how to write or how to do basic maths. So where was the problem? Digging deeper, we found that there were tens of thousands of ghost teachers in the payroll of the government. So why not the government, instead to spend money educating the children through the years, why not they came, came here and buy the children, not buy the education of the children already, like getting after four years in India, for example, we know that to educate a girl, the government spends 13, 1300 more or less, 13, yeah, 13 to 1400 uh, to uh, nine years. Why not get this money, save the money, and then go to charities that will apply new models, that will deliver at the end of the nine years, really educated girls, girls that they know how to write, how to read, how to do basic math, and these girls, they're not going to get married at the age of 13 because they have more education, and then you really make a change in the society. So the cost for this education is the same 1300, but when the government deploys this money, through the years, he's not sure about the outcome. And with this model, he will only deploy the money knowing that the outcome was achieved. So this is a, a health deal that we just launched last year. Uh, so the structure here, very easy. So you have the Optimus Foundation, you have an implementation manager, you have some service providers, you have the, 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 the evaluator, and then you have uh, uh, the outcome funders. What we want to achieve with this uh, deal? So, Rajasthan, very poor uh, region in India. Uh, they have many, many small private hospitals that they don't uh, they don't have any quality in these hospitals. So the mother, when she is going to give birth, she prefers to give birth at home than going to the hospital because in the hospital she can get an infection or the children can get an infection and both die. So what we want to do here, we want to train the, the staff of these hospitals to give health quality standards, to put in place health quality standards in these hospitals, and with these health quality standards, we wanted to save uh, between two and